Hey guys, this is a quick video about my experience with the Spinten U-Box 100. I've been working on this since the summer and had various roadblocks in between, but uh, finally the thing is up and running. Jagger, get out of the way. And uh, yeah, so I've been now riding this for about a month and I really have to say I'm impressed with how it handles and everything works the way you would expect it. So quick rundown on what happened. So my first experience was not great. The first version that I received did not work out of the box. And um, it basically had IMU issues. The IMU had sporadic weird noise and it was basically impossible to balance for more than a second or two. It would just get these jerky um, spikes that would make the board go crazy. So I told Spintent about it. They pretty quickly sent me a new logic board. Not a whole new VESC, but just a logic board. Their VESC is a two layer approach where they have the power stage at the bottom and then the logic board sticks on top of it kind of similar to what the uh, the float wheel ESC looks like but they weren't really just they hadn't really designed it to replace the logic board because they apparently used red loctite on the screws uh, for the heat sink so three out of the four screws broke when I tried to remove them. I had to drill one out. Um, and yeah, so now this is only secured with a single screw. So I'm not super confident in the whole thing, but so far it's been pretty reliable and plus everything is held down. But long story short, let's take a look at how it was built. So here is what it looks like. The U-Box 100 sits flush with the enclosure so that when the aluminum lid comes on top, then we'll have perfect contact right here. I'll just put some thermal paste here, or maybe I'll use a thin 0.5 millimeter pad, but I haven't decided yet. And then we have all the ports that are needed are all on this side, which is really cool because that means we can have our buzzer. So here is our buzzer. Then we have our Bluetooth module. This one goes into the eight pin connector. I only have a seven pin, but that's okay because it lines up on the left. And so I don't have ADC three connected to anything. Also, I don't use the five volt here on the left but everything we need is here, including the, the pull-down resistors because the Spintent VESC does not include pull-downs, so I have included them in here. And this connects to the three-pin footpad connector. Then we have the hall sensors here, the six-pin standard, and then underneath the phase wires is the standard switch that they provide. And I've also designed the model so that the switch fits. On this side, I'm going to use a smaller charge port, the same size as used in the pint, because that one will have a lower profile. So it will fit in here without pushing against the VESC. So there'll be enough clearance and then the charge wires can go around here. But I don't have that charge port yet, so that will just get closed up. So now I'm going to hot glue the Bluetooth down. I'll try to keep it as far away as possible from the phase wires. So I'm gonna have it here on the ground, on the, on the bottom, and then the beeper gets hot glued down somewhere here. And then we should be good to go, yeah. And then the XT90 
just slides into this opening right here and should be secured. Maybe I'll add some hot glue. And yeah, oh, also I didn't have those nuts for the six pin hall sensor, the Switchcraft connectors. So I just 3D printed some and that way I was able to do the yellow for the foot pads and black for the hall sensors. So before I close it all up, I want to make sure that everything is working. Foot sensors, hall sensors, motor, everything. So uh, I have put this Hypercore motor into a vise. I got my vest tool over here. And right here, I've got a power supply. I've set it to 36 volts. That's the most it can deliver. And we will use that to test that everything is okay. So I love this multicolor button. It basically is linked to the LEDs on the VESC PCB, which is really cool because on all the other VESCs, you have no idea what is going on. Um, those LEDs, you can never see them again once you've closed up your board. So we're going to connect over USB. Bluetooth didn't work out of the box. And the reason why it didn't is because when we go into the app, they had selected app to use ADC. I have no idea why it defaulted to that, but if we switch to app to use is UART and write that, then we can now also, sorry, you didn't see my screen, but I switched to UART up here and I hit the right app um, button. So the one, the A arrow down very important not to forget that. And then uh, now the Bluetooth would work too, but it's already, we're already connected over USB. So we might as well also run the motor wizard. So let's do that. So load default parameters. In this case, it's actually okay because this is the very first time and why not? Give me the defaults, whatever Spintent thought we should be using. And now don't forget to change sensorless ERPM to 2000, motor poles to 30. But it's not very important right now. We can do it again later once the motor is in the, um, in the board and once we have the battery connected. But this is just to make sure that I have wired my hall sensors correctly and um, I'm selecting 10 cells to cut because the 36 volts I have that matches up. And I limited the battery current to 10 amps. And now next, wheel diameter. Again, that also doesn't really matter right now, but well, we've already added 280 and here, 30 and now we're going to run the detection and what's nice about this power supply is that we can now watch the amps and we can see what's going on so we see that it's drawing amps so now it's doing the hall sensors And it looks pretty promising. I'm, I'm usually very good at getting the connectors wrong the first time around. So I'm excited that I got it right this time. Motor L is zero. Um, I've had that before. We'll just fix that later on. But the key here is it says hall sensors. That means that I didn't screw up the connector which means I can close up the enclosure. Oh, one other thing we want to test is the foot sensors. So to test the foot sensors, we need to first switch to the balance app. Just be careful, do not write this yet. Instead, go into the balance tab here and go to faults and make sure that you don't have zeros here. This needs to be three or something high, even 3.3. We don't know yet what our foot sensors will deliver. 
So we want to make sure that there is no chance that when we hit app right, that the motor starts spinning because we don't want that. So we'll hit up right. Now I already have this selected here, this um, RP app button right there. That gives us real time data down here. And so now when I press one side of the foot sensor, I get 3.2 on the right for ADC2. The other side gives me 3.2 on the left for ADC1. Perfect. That means our foot sensor connector also works, which means we can now glue it all and close it up. So it is ready to be closed up. We added some hot glue to the XT90, to the buzzer and the Bluetooth module on the bottom, which is nice because it's as far away from the phase wires as possible. And then here, hot glue holding this in and we got our nuts on the switchcraft connectors and our motor connector. And then I also sanded down the corroded um, copper so that it gets perfect heat transfer. And now I'm gonna add some thermal paste and put the lid on. Just kidding, found a thermal pad, putting that on. This is a one millimeter thermal pad. So now for the past few weeks, this has been kind of my favorite board. It really performs well. It has no issues that I can think of. It, uh, it has been riding well at speed, well on trails. There is the lower amp limit compared to the Little Fokker. It's only 100 amps. Um, so on some of the steeper terrain, you can't push it quite as hard. And I would imagine that really heavy riders will want that extra oomph that a Little Fokker can provide. But for the average weight person and especially lighter riders, I really don't see a downside to the spin tent. I've had a great experience with it. I, um, I love this board, obviously also because of the great tire I got on it and the uh, 20S battery and the WTF rails. Yeah, all in all, it's been just a great board and I can't tell that I'm riding a spin tent versus a little Fokker. There is just one situation where you can hear a difference between the U-Box and the Little Fokker and that is when you're really slow and preferably indoors you can hear this weird humming noise coming out of the motor which I suspect comes from the IMU. Yeah, I, I can't really explain it but it's definitely there. Here I'll let you hear what uh, what it sounds like. Now this board uses the Badger bumpers in the back. This is the bumper for the torque box because I got the uh, 20S in there, which fits really nice. And um, in the front, this is a regular Badger bumper for the front. And here you can see the uh, restricted handle area. This is basically because the U-Box uh, needed that space to fit in here. And I was obviously just being lazy and I reused the flow glider design as easily as I could. And so this is sticking out here, but I do like those handles. So I didn't want to just completely get rid of it like some people did. And instead I now, have, I now still have a good three finger grip in here. And uh, it's pretty easy to carry this board. And I do not like side handles. And um, yeah, so that's working out pretty well. Now, there are two things that I want to change still on this setup. First, I need to add myself a little charge port because taking out the XT90 and charging over it is really annoying. And then while I have it open, I might as well try to add some kind of lights. The 12 volt output is really powerful and uh, I'm just gonna add some simple headlights in the front. Nothing fancy. So here's my current setup going through an XT30 
to this connector. So this is a GX16-4. Uh, the 4 stands for the 4 pins. The 16 stands for the 16 millimeter diameter of it. And we intentionally picked it to be different than the GT port, which is also GX16, but a 3 pin port because this is a 20S charger, so we don't want any chances of someone plugging in a GT charger into this board or taking this charger and plugging it into a GT. So, this is all I got. See you guys next time.